Namaste, G. Welcome. Welcome to my heart. Welcome to our meditation. Welcome to our time of sharing Sangha together. On this weekend, when the aspects are a little challenging for the world, I'm glad to be here with you. Let us begin our time together with a meditation, just short interning, if you will. Focusing your attention at the sun center, the point between your eyes. Turn your head to the left with a double exhalation. And bring your head back to the center. Begin to watch your breath. Oh, great spirit. Oh, ye powers that be. Saints, sages of all times, of all places. Oh, ye path makers of old. Sweep clear our paths that we might better see thee. Sweep clear our paths that we might remember who and what we are. O ye powers that be. Om Shanti. 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 Om Shanti. Shanti. Shanti, Om Shanti, 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 Om Saha Navavatu Saha Nau Bunaktu Saha Viriam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadidama Stu Ma Vishavahai Om. May there be peace between us, may the communication between us be eased filled. May there be harmony. Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi. Namaste. We come together today between two eclipses. The next will be coming this Thursday, a solar eclipse and a new moon. We come together on a weekend when the planet Mars is opposing the planet Pluto, which for many people can bring times of great uh, revelation of the contents of the subconscious mind. Sometimes not so easy to see. And so I thought today, perhaps we could share a Dharma story. I could share a Dharma story with you. Perhaps one that will help you along the way, will help me certainly along the way. And so sit back, take a deep breath and become comfortable. Eons and eons and eons ago, back as far as the mind can remember, in the vast, vast Milky Way, 
there lived Gaia. She was a planet. And upon Gaia and in Gaia, within Gaia, there lived many, excuse me, eons and eons and eons ago, as far back as the mind can remember, in the vast, vast Milky Way, lived Gaia. And upon and within Gaia lived many, many beings. They were all beings of light. Every being upon Gaia was a being of light. Every being upon Gaia had within its essence goodness. But alas, the nature of those beings that lived upon Gaia is that they could not see that they were the light. They could not remember that they were the light. They did not know that they were the light. A tragedy it was. And upon all these beings, there was a soul whose name I think you will remember because it has lived through the eons. His name was Nasrudin. Now you may know him as Nas, Nasrudin the Mula, the Mula, the seeker of God, the seeker of the good. This is a word that the Mula means, the seeker of God, the seeker of good. But at this time that the story begins, the story takes place. Nasrudin was a boy before he became the mullah. One morning, after waking from what seemed to be a long, long, dreamless, Nasrudin opened his eyes. And upon opening his eyes, he looks around. Looks like a pretty pleasant place to be, he says to himself. They move. Temperature seemed pretty nice. Everything that his eyes rested upon seemed quite pleasing to him. But he didn't know where he was. Hmm. He doesn't know who he is. He's woken up, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know who he is. But he looks down and he looks at this and he says, well, maybe I'm this, maybe I'm this, maybe that's who I am. So he decides to go exploring and he gets out of his bed and he searches and searches and he sees a mirror and he sees that he you know, he can see what this body looks like and he sees that as he moves, the body in the mirror moves. Ah, that must be him. But he searches through his mind, through all of the things he remembers in his mind. And it's quite odd. He wakes up from this dream and he knows the name of the plant. He knows the name of the colors. He knows the names of the things around that he sees around him, but he does not know this. Well, I think I'll let go of that thought of who am I? I'll come back to that later, he says to himself. Hmm. Goes out, walks along a beautiful path, thinks, well, what am I doing here? I don't know. Looks like I'm taking a walk. Plops down in the dirt. Huh. Why did they come here? I don't know. Maybe I'll find somebody who can tell me. Who am I? I don't know, he says. In the distance, he hears a hammer. goes towards the sound, sees a big wall, 
middle of the wall, there's a hole. Decides to go through the hole. Sticks his head in. And he sees what looks like someone human, a person, a person, a being, another being that kind of sort of looks like him. Now, Srutan doesn't say anything. He just waits very patiently. And the being looks up and says, well, hello, sir. How are you today? Nasruddin looks around and says, are you talking to me? Why, yes, young man, I'm talking to you. Have you ever seen me before? No, no, you haven't been here before. Not to this room. Well, then how do you know who I am? How do you know that you're talking to me? Ah, uh, well, I can see you. It must be the you, the I, that I can see. Well, then, you must be seeing this, and so this must be what I am. You see, sir, I have a problem. I have forgotten who I am. I've forgotten who I am. I don't know my name. I've heard people say, Nasruddin, Nasruddin, that's in my memory. Somehow I know that I am not this Nasruddin, but I don't know who I am. What am I to do? Please help me, sir. Help me. Well, Nasruddin, you've come to the right place. This is a school of mysticism that you've walked into. This is a school for life. This is a school where you will learn about who and what you are, always. This is a school. Come in, Nasruddin. You are most welcome. I'm sorry, sir, but I see you're holding a hammer. Looks like a carpenter shop to me. Doesn't look anything like a school. Smells like a carpenter shop. Ah. Uh, I cannot see yet, Miss Rudin. And with that, the man reaches over and with his thumb, takes his thumb and leans close to Nasruddin, very gently. Blesses Nasruddin. And with that, the clouds disappear. The vagueness disappears. The uncertainty disappears. The veil of forgetfulness disappears. And in front of his very eyes, Nasruddin sees this man, no longer a man, but a being of light. He sees the lion-faced being of El Shaddai appearing in front of his eyes. El Shaddai, the seeker of God. El Shaddai, the knower of God. He sees his guru, the mirror to his soul. 
And in seeing his guru, he sees the knower of God, the knower of the good, the knower of the goodness. And with that, Nasruddin says, ah, Guruji, Guruji, Namaste. Om Gum Guru Gyo Namaha. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshvara, Guru Satchat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. And he bows. Now, Nasruddin had a great blessing. He had received the blessing of his guru. And we all don't have a guru. Not all of us do. Not all of us are have that karma. And we've all woken in this strange land, you and I. Land where the dreams can be confusing and chaotic. When a land where we cannot see the difference between the daydreams and the night dreams or the day horrors and the night horrors, or the day beauty and the night beauty. A land where we need to see the beauty that we are. A land where we have not been able to see the beauty that we are. We have all woken up. We don't remember. Most don't remember when they were born into this beautiful body these beautiful bodies. Most don't remember what they did yesterday, what they thought yesterday. Most don't remember if you said, where were you at eight o'clock yesterday morning? What were you thinking? What were you saying? What were you doing? And then most might be able to say, well, you know, I was having a cup of tea or I was having my morning espresso, my morning cappuccino, my morning cafe au lait. I was reading a book. All right, so you have general memories, all of the beings upon the earth, but they don't remember. There is a veil upon the minds of all the beings upon the earth. If we don't remember what we did yesterday, what we said a few minutes ago, what we thought a few hours ago, let alone last month, last week, last year, 10 years ago, a lifetime ago. And how will you remember who and what you are? Well, we have for this the path of mysticism, the path of practices. What a blessing upon Gaia to have these practices. The same as Nasruddin did. Meditation, meditation, meditation. The key to seeing who and what you are. The key to letting go of the chuckles of your mind. The key to lifting above the chaos of the mind. But first, to move into meditation, we have to see and address the nature of the place that we are living. You are living upon the earth, on the earth. You're not living around the earth. Many, many of the other planets in this solar system and other solar systems, the beings live around the planet, not on the planet. Here, you are living on the planet. What do you know? You know you're living in a physical body. You know there's an illusion that you are this. And how uncomfortable that can be sometimes. You know, there's an illusion that you are the thoughts that rise in this, the mind stuff that you become relative to, the mind stuff that rises in the mind. Living in this physical body, this has intelligence. This has its own patternings. 
this must be disciplined. This has proclivities from the time it is born. It has habits. It seemingly acts of its own accords. This walks through time, yours walks through time, and it changes, it modifies itself as it walks through time. And as it walks through time and walks through circumstances, the thoughts that the body becomes relative to, that the consciousness become relative to, that your energy becomes relative to. They arise in the mind. They fall, they rise, they fall, they rise. Well, Nasruddin must have done something. There is a path that he found and we want to become like him. Nasruddin the boy became Nasruddin the mullah, Nasruddin the knower of the good, the knower of God. And so what happens? The mind becomes enmeshed. His mind became enmeshed, tangled in a web. We need to free consciousness. You need to free your consciousness. To walk the road to spiritual maturity, you need to free your consciousness. Now, what can I say here? the road to spiritual maturity. There is a road to spiritual maturity. And that phrase can be a problem because you may, your mind may say, well, I'm mature, I'm mature. I don't need to go any further or I'm this number of years upon the earth. So surely I must be mature. The answer is neti, neti. We can all and should all grow in maturity. We should all grow in expanding our horizon of awareness. Begin as Nasruddin began with the recognition that you know you've learned the names of many things upon the earth. Not all, but many. But Nasruddin knew that he did not know who he was. He was searching to find out, who am I? I know I have forgotten who I am. Am I a man dreaming I'm a butterfly? Or am I a butterfly dreaming I'm a man? Am I a man dreaming I'm a bird? Or am I a bird dreaming I'm a man? Am I a woman dreaming that I can fly? Or am I a light being that can fly dreaming I'm a woman? I am thinking that you and I, that the problem of being here upon the earth is that you begin to believe that you are the dreamer. Excuse me, you forget you are the dreamer and you begin to believe that you are the dream. You are begin to believe that you are that which you see in the dream. You begin to believe that you are this. You begin to believe that as this changes, you are that which changes. You begin to believe that as the thoughts arise in the mind, you are those thoughts. But what happens, my beloved, when you go into your dream state? Who is that? Who is that awareness in the dream state? If you are this and you are only this, who is that? Who is that that's searching in the dream state? Who is that that's going from room to room in the dream state? Who is that that's seeing your old beloved friends in the dream state? Not this, not this. Now, how do you remember? How do you remember? Well, you remember by becoming aware of your thoughts, but we'll talk about that in a moment. You remember by having fun. You remember by doing fun and joy-filled things. Learn a new language. 
learn to think a new thought. If you can think a new thought, you can free yourself. You know, when you have one thought, you're stuck. You're truly, truly stuck. One thought, you're stuck. You can only go a certain way. One thought is how we become sick. One thought, one thought only. And that thought repeats itself again and again and again and again. Now, that is not a state of balance. That thought can be angular to the masculine, angular to the feminine. It can be a thought that is filled with a high degree of emotionality. One thought over and over and over again. Think a new thought. Buna ziwa. Buna ziwa. Jin dobra. Jin dobra. Buongiorno. Buenas tardes. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Learn a new language. Je voudrais pain au chocolat et café au lait, s'il vous plaît. Pain au chocolat, the bread with chocolate. Not chocolate bread. Pain au chocolat. Café au lait. Not coffee with cream, but café au lait. The sound is different. The vibration is different. You know, to order a chocolate croissant is very different than saying, uh, je voudrais pain au chocolat, s'il vous plaît. Very different vibration, very different feeling state. You're trying to change your consciousness. Learn a new language. And I'll tell you, it matters not if you learn to speak new languages fluently. That's great. If you can do that, that's wonderful. But begin by learning different languages. Begin by learning to say hello. Begin by learning to say merci beaucoup. Gracias. Gracias. Begin by saying buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. As one of my friends in Spain says, you know, we were talking about the language and, and uh, she would switch between the words Alhambra and Alhambra. Alhambra and Alhambra. And I said to her one day, well, you know, what is the correct pronunciation? She said, well, in Spanish, it's Alhambra. And in English, when I'm talking to you in English, I'm saying Alhambra, because that's how it's pronounced by the English people, English speaking people. Great mystery there. She did not say the correct way was the way that the Spaniards say it. She said it depends upon the language that you are speaking. And to me, there's a very different vibration in the word Alhambra than Alhambra, very different. Learn different languages and you will change the nature of your mind. Learn different languages and you will expand your horizon of awareness. You will change the way that you see life. My guru said always, travel, 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 travel. It is the great spiritual Practice the great spiritual adventure is to travel to different places, meet different people. Travel with an open mind, travel seeing, wishing to see how others have chosen to live their life. You know, you leave um, the country you're in and you will see great, great differences in the ideals, in the values of the people in what they value, in how they uh, choose to live. One of uh, the meditation students was talking in class the other day and she was talking about, she's from uh, Switzerland. And she said, you know, sometimes I, I feel badly about living here. I said, really? She said, 
you know, we have the best cheese in the world, the best milk in the world, the best chocolate in the world. And I, and she kind of took a breath and I said, and the best mountains and the cleanest water and the nicest air and the least wars. And she said, I know, I'm not sure I'm worthy. And I said, oh, you incarnated into that paradise upon the earth. Of course you're worthy. Get rid of that thought. You don't want to reincarnate someplace that is not as blessed as that part of the earth. And here you see the problem of the mind. Truly, truly, you see the problem of the mind. She is incarnated in a place where she has great chocolate, great crema, really good fromage, beautiful hiking, clear air, beautiful clean lakes, wonderful water, and peace, and ease, and she doesn't know if she deserves it. Do not let that be you. Become free of that, because as she has it, we all have it. The goodness comes into your life, and your mind says, well, yeah, this is nice, but it's not going to last. Or, oh, this is nice. I should enjoy it now while it's here. Or this is nice. I wonder what I did to deserve this. Or this is nice. It's going to be taken away from me. Neti, neti, neti. Let go of those thoughts. Let go of the feeling of unworthiness, the thought that you were unworthy. And explore for yourself other parts of life. See how others live. Eat new food, eat new food. Make that a practice in your life to eat new food. Learn about new food. If you happen to be fortunate enough to live in a city like Chicago or near a city like Chicago, and there are many cities like this now around the world, you will find enormous opportunities to eat food of other cultures. Go to a grocery store that sells food that's different than what you eat. I just um, found a, a new grocery store up the street. Somebody mentioned it to me, it's a small store. And they sell um, mostly foods that people in the Caribbean and people from Mexico enjoy. And so I went there not long ago to find what was there and discovered that there was fruit that I had not seen in all the tra travels I've been, not, not seen these fruits, and discovered uh, different kinds of peppers that I had not seen. And so, you know, what do you do as a son? Now, why you take the names of things down and you buy one and take a recipe and figure out how to make it and taste it taste of that which is unfamiliar to you. It doesn't matter if you like the taste in the beginning, that's not important. What's important is that you have expanded your horizon of awareness. Many years ago, my beloved husband and I were with his brother and we went to a Korean restaurant down on Clark Street. And it was just up the street from our house. So we used to go there all the time. We'd, we really liked it. We'd go, you know, every 10 days or so. And one day, and we got to know the owner. And one day we were there. The man comes out with this beautiful silver platter. And on this silver platter were little balls, you know, little round clear balls. And they were covered with a, like a white, a white covering. So as we walked out the door, he very politely bowed to us and said, please help yourself. Take one of these delicious desserts. We each took one and we walked out onto the street. And we bit into these delicious desserts. And I will tell you that it was a fat ball, a fat ball. It's a delicious fat ball. 
which did not appeal to the taste buds of any of the three of us. It was probably the most repulsive food that any of us had ever eaten to our taste buds, to our taste buds. And I thought, well, isn't this interesting? We were given this as a great gift. Clearly, it wasn't a joke. He wasn't trying to pull anything over. This was, he bowed, he gave it, please help yourself to this special dessert that we made. But our taste buds could not handle it. So what is the sadhana? The sadhana is, hmm, I think I should eat this. And let me see what they think is so special and so wonderful about it. Now, I have to confess, I've not gone back and had another one, a second one. And I remember very clearly the taste of the first one. But I've often thought, ah, perhaps I should go back again and try to find that recipe and try to find what it is that is so tasty to someone else about life, about the nature of life. What is so tasty that they like? Watch new films in other languages. You know, it's very easy today. Get films in a foreign language. Even if you get subtitles in your own language, you're hearing the sound, the vak, great mystery in the vak. You're hearing the vak of the other language. And by hearing that, your consciousness changes. Hearing the sound and seeing the image. The petite shot. The little cat, you see a little cat there. The woman is speaking. Your mind expands because you see this. Get books in translation, if you will, but books that are written by authors whose first language is different than your own. Someone said to me the other day, they were worried about turning in their homework because they English was not their first language. And I said, well, you know, what's your first language? And she said, Romanian. And I said, well, you must teach me a word of Romanian. Because I don't know any Romanian. So I'm not going to be concerned about your English. Your English is beautiful. Do not let your thoughts be impeded by what you see. Do not let the mind be limiting your enjoyment of what you're doing. I do think it's helpful to read books in, the, in other languages. And, and uh, really the way that I was taught by my guru to do this is to get children's books and begin to read children's books with a dictionary next to you in another language. And take your time, enjoy. Enjoy the language, enjoy the sound of the language. Um, you know, you've got a great access now with the internet where you can understand or hear how to pronounce a word by just simply entering the word into a, a Google search and, and uh, finding it through that way. It's a wonderful way to expand your horizon of awareness. Um, and tells you much about the consciousness of a, of, the, of a people. Le pain au chocolat. The priority is that which comes first. The bread comes first, that's a greater priority. Le vin blanc, the wine is the priority. The adjective comes afterwards, the descriptor. The noun is more uh, important in that language than the adjective is. The chocolate bread. In English, the adjective is more important than the noun. Well, what does that tell me? It says that English is a more emotional, emotion-filled language. English is a language of business, they say, 
but it is a more emotion-filled language. The more adjectives that you put in front of something, the more adjectives that you pile onto something, the more that you are trying to modify someone else's consciousness. And so you say the chocolate croissant by you're immediately getting the mind to say, oh, chocolate, 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 chocolate. But if I say le pain au chocolat, then I am saying, ah, the bread, the bread of life. And yes, this one happens to be chocolat. Now, watching films in another language, what you will see and what you should do as you are doing this practice, this sadhana, is really become aware of the difference in topic, uh, the difference in the way the film is structured. And it's, it's really a tremendous learning experience. I was watching a, a film, there's a lot of wonderful new Iranian, young Iranian filmmakers. And I was watching a very interesting film a, a while ago. My husband is quite a lover of foreign film. And uh, the entire film, the entire film from beginning to end was about a group of people going to the beach for the afternoon and staying at the beach the, over the weekend. And one of the women disappeared. Now, if you had an American film with that storyline, you would have to have some, uh, some excitement, some violence, something that occurred that would tell you what happened to the woman that would give you the end result of what happened to the woman. They have to be tied up. This film ended with the people looking for her and not finding her. And some of them went home and some of them stayed on the island. And that was it. There was no resolution. It was just a moment in time that was captured. Oh, that's an interesting state of awareness to have. And so watch films from places that you have not been in languages that you do not know. Now, here's the key to what I'm trying to say to you. How did Nasruddin the boy become Nasruddin the mullah? How did he become the boy who knew not what he was or who he was, or that he was the good? How did he become the soul, Nasruddin, the great mullah, the great knower of the good? He became this being. He matured into this being. He grew into his spiritual maturity in the same way that you too can grow. He watched his thoughts. He corrected the air of his thinking. He learned how other peoples lived. He learned the nature of all of the life around him. And he meditated. He meditated, he meditated, he meditated. He chanted. Om, 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 om. Or in the case of Nasruddin, the mullah, he chanted the name for him of the good, Allah, 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 Allah. The same name as Krishna, 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 Christ, 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 the good, the goodness, the God, in all of its names and forms. No my beloved, that you are that. You are the good. You are the good. You are the light. You are that which is good. And remember that every day. Learn to observe your thoughts. You do this very simply. You take your awareness and you raise it above your mind, your head, your physical head. Take your awareness and you're moving it into the astral. You're taking your consciousness and consciously, intentionally moving it into the astral. 
and you're beginning to watch your thoughts and you're watching your thoughts as they rise in the mind. As they rise in the mind, you're watching them. And as they rise and as they watch them, as you watch them, you will see the pattern. Ah, oh, every time I have a thought of this person, this soul, ah, the mind closes down. Oh, the emotions rise. Oh, ah, the mind blossoms. Oh, the mind opens up. Oh, the mind flowers. Oh, bliss and peace come to me. You wish to cultivate those thoughts that bring you bliss and peace and joy and let go of those that do not. And so what can you do? You think a new thought in the ways that I have suggested to you. You make it your practice, you make it your sadhana and you find happiness and joy in the doing. It's fun to travel. You can't do it in person, do it virtually. There are all these wonderful programs now that will take you on tours of places. Um, oh, I, I got, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. One of my nieces sent us a gift, Curiosity Stream. It's called Curiosity Stream. And in Curiosity Stream, you can go to all kinds of places in the world and learn all kinds of things. And it's just marvelous. It's a marvelous way to relax and to enjoy and to expand your horizon of awareness. Expand your horizon of awareness. And so I've given you many, many things that may sound to you like they are ordinary parts of living. But I say to you, it's sadhana, it's spiritual sadhana. Do these things with intent. Expand your awareness. Observe your thoughts, observe your thoughts, observe your thoughts, and guard them. Guard them with ever greater diligence. A thought of fear arises, neti, neti, neti. I wonder what poem I can pronounce. I wonder what mantra I can chant. I wonder what thought I can think to replace this thought that is confining. I wonder what kindness I can do to replace this thought of anger, of hatred. I wonder how I can change the kaleidoscope just a little bit to see differently. And here, I think is the How would I say this? The question to ask yourself is, how do I let go of the hurt of the mind? How do I let go of my attachment to hurt? My attachment to feeling like I've, you know, this person was rude or that person was rude or they were mean or I didn't like the way that they did this. I wish they had done it differently or, oh, I'm gonna get back to them. All the emotionality that gets stirred, churred, churred, churned up. How do I let go of that? Remember the story of Nasruddin. Nasruddin the boy who became the man and he became the mullah. He became the knower of God. He became the knower of the good. And thus, so can you, through the remembrance of these practices, through watching your thoughts and changing your thoughts, through recognizing that this is a sadhana, it is a spiritual discipline, to pick up with great courage, to pick up with great effort, to pick up daily, to pick up hourly, to pick up every moment that you are breathing. And so let us spend the rest of our time together in meditation, vivifying and strengthening our beings, bringing extra vitality and energy for the week ahead. Namaste.
Sit with your hands upon your lap, your thighs, closing your eyes, focus your attention at the sun center and turning your head to the left with a double exhalation. Bring the head back to the center now and begin to watch the breath. Pull the energy from the limbs of the body to the trunk of the body. Use the sipping breath to do this. Using the sipping breath, pull the energy from the trunk of the body to the spinal column. In the base of the spine, pull the energy up to the sun center. And move that energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you. Move it around to the left, behind you, to the right and in front of you. Wrap your entire being in this golden ball of light. And now expand that light. See in front of you a path. And enter the path. Walk through the gardens. Into the meadow. Feel yourself ascending. In front of you is a path leading into the forest. Ascend upon that path. It is easy to ascend. You can see your way clearly. Ascending, you see that you are going up a mountainside. The trees become thinner. You reach a clearing. In that clearing, you see a shrine. Built for you. Entering into the shrine, it is filled with light. Step in to the pool of light that you see in front of you. Pure crystalline light. And walk to the light waterfall that you see. Walk under the waterfall. Feel the light pouring over your crown center. Vivifying your being.
feel the light filling every cell of your being. Washing away the confusion. Washing away the confining emotions. Washing away the heavy negative karmas. you are ready, leave the waterfall of light. Walking to the pool, feel yourself clothed in new clothing, a new skin, if you will. And as you leave, turn and bow to the blessed waterfall, the waterfall that vivifies your being, the waterfall that heals, that cleanses, that lifts upward. And know that at any time you can return here of your own accord. And return now to your meditation place. May the powers that be pour forth their blessings upon you. May the powers that be fill every cell of your being with goodness. May the powers that be dissolve away the confusion and the veils from your mind. That you might remember who and what thou art, that thou might remember that thou art goodness, thou art good, thou art the goodness, that thou might attune to the God that is within you, that is within all beings, that is within life, the God, the good of life. In whatever name or form you are drawn to, Always remember the good and know that thou art that. As you see the divine, 
as El Shaddai reveals himself to you, itself to you, as Krishna, as Buddha, as Kuan Yin, as Jesus, as Allah, as Hanuman Ji, as Ganesha Ji, as Parvati Ji, as Shiva Ji, as all of the forms of the divine reveal themselves to you. May you see that you are that, that you are that goodness. Um. And may you remember Namaste, Namaskar.